Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Jason with Rock Hunting Life. Uh, today's video, I thought it would be pretty cool if I showed you some rocks just coming out of my tumbler. So the rocks that have been in this tumbler, this is my lotto tumbler, it's my vibratory tumbler. They've been in here for about a week. Uh, they've gone through three stages. I did some cutting of the rocks and some grinding and shaping of the rocks before I put them in the lotto tumbler. I did not use a rotary tumbler to shape these rocks. Uh, you'll see what they look like. Uh, most of them are sea maggots, and I'm going to be using them to make pendants. So they're currently just finishing up the final stage, final polish. I've got some soap in there and some borax, and they're just getting cleaned right now. And then I'll pull them out, and I'll show you how I go ahead and make uh, pendants out of them. I've got my colander washed up. All my agates and silicas and jaspers and chalcedonies are all washed up here. I thought it'd be cool to come outside and show how shiny they are in the light and just go over the different types of agates we can get here uh, in Nova Scotia. All of these agates and silicas and jaspers and chalcedonies are from the Bay of Funday area. Actually, probably most of this material was collected within probably a 10 mile radius of each other. Uh, all along the bay there, along the beach. Just a huge variety of agates that you can get. It truly is one of the best localities in the world for collecting agates and jaspers and chalcedonies. I'm going to go through some of them here. I've grouped them out into types of agates. So we'll just go through a, little, a few of them, show them off here in the sunlight. Hopefully you guys enjoy them. So the first bunch I'm going to show are from Scotts Bay Beach. You guys have seen many videos from Scott that we do from Scotts Bay Beach. And we get this variety of agate called shadow agates on that beach. And these are a few uh, that I've collected over the years uh, that I've slabbed up into some slices. Make some, I'm gonna make some pendants out of these. But these are extremely beautiful. There is some super fine banding in that one there. As you can see. But we basically call them shadow agates because they're pretty much translucent and you can see a hint of, you can see on a solid backdrop, you can see the, the shadow of the banding there. And they're super translucent. Really pretty, pretty agates. Here's some moss agate from Moose Island. Very beautiful material. Here's another piece of it. Then we get into some of my favorite. This is lobster hole agate and it's mostly red flame. This spot is very difficult to get to, the lobster hole. It's quite a hike, so this stuff is a little bit rare. But it ends up making beautiful jewelry just because of the red flame patterns you can get in it. 
Sometimes you'll have agates in the middle of the flames. I wanted to show this piece because it's an absolute stunner. It's got some translucency to it. Just very, very beautiful. I'm gonna turn this one into a pendant. You can see that glow from the sunlight going through it. And you got the flames on each side. It's a very beautiful piece. Here's another variety of the lobster hole agate. This one's just a little more quartzy in the middle. But on this one, you can see some different colors, some yellow. So next I got these three that I sliced that are from Scotts Bay Beach. This is a little tiny seam agate I found on Scotts Bay Beach, but it's really unique. Very unique flames coming from it. Yellow in the center. It's the cool, the flames really cool and this is like a bright red. Almost like a pink. And that yellow center is just really unique. I haven't found too many like this. Here's another slice from the same piece. So that'll make a nice little pendant. And they do have some nice translucency. So these three are from a sea maggot I also found in Scotts Bay and very mossy. Super mossy actually. And these are some of my favorite from the batch. This is a plumy carnelian. It's got some nice mossy plumage in there. And this one's really cool. This is some amethyst. A little fractured, but really cool details in there. There's some pink in there with the purple. Can't get the focus. This one's like a pink quartz. It's got lots of pink in it. It's almost got some lace action in there, like a pink lace. It's a lot of quartz in it though, but it's a really cool color combination. Not translucent, but very pretty. And this one here is actually a limb cast core. This one's found on Scotts Bay Beach as well. Very agate as you can see. Uh, takes beautiful polish. Some nice reds and pinks in there.
Very cool. So I'm going to take a few of these and go down and show you how I actually pick which ones I like to use as pendants and how I set them up and make the pendants. So let's go down and take a look at that now. Okay, so I've picked five pendants here that I'm going to make of uh, the different materials. And I have a bale that I'm going to be using. The standard silver bale that will be glued onto the back of each piece. For the bigger ones, I have a bigger bale. For this smaller piece on the shadow agate, because the shadow agate is translucent, I don't want a big bale taking up, you know, translucency on the back. As you can see, you're gonna be able to see through it. So I use a smaller bale on this one. And I use a medium grade CA. This is a lapidary CA. Um, I have a, an accelerator that I use to make sure the, the CA sets quickly so that it doesn't uh, have to wait to cure. Uh, this, this just lets me set the bale exactly where I want it uh, right away. And at the end, I'll put a little bit of this super thin CA around the bale edges on the back. This has capillary action, so what this does basically is uh, it'll just kind of suck underneath the bale and just really give it that extra binding uh, to keep it on there forever. So that's what I used to make these. I'll go through the process now of, of doing these and you can watch. Okay, I have our five pendants made here. I fixed those bales on the back, they look great. Here's our lobster hole pendant. I really like this one because of the glow you get as you rotate it in the light there. That's really cool. The red flame is the main feature with the translucent chalcedony there. It's a nice combo. Here's our shadow agate. You can kind of see the shadow banding in there. That's why we call them shadow agates. Great shine on them. And here's our carnelian plume. Really nice piece. And then here's our lobster hole, another lobster hole, red flame. So shiny, it's hard to get an angle where it doesn't uh, go out of focus.
And last but not least is our Scotts Bay Moss Agate. Just an array of reds and yellows intertwined to form that nice mossy texture. Beautiful little pennant. So all five of these pennants will be on Etsy as well. I'll be making a ton more out of this batch here. So all these will be up on the Etsy store at the showing of this video. So head on over there. First come, first serve. Uh, these will probably be selling for like 20 bucks a piece, maybe. Maybe a little less. Uh, they'll probably, 20 bucks plus the we still have our lacrosse, summer lacrosse discount. That's still applied. I think that was a 20% discount. So yeah, you're going to, these are pretty, pretty well priced and uh, really awesome little pendants. Good examples of Nova Scotia agates and the variety you can get. So head on over there and check them out. If you like them, pick, pick one up. With that being said, hope everybody has a great week. We'll catch you in the next one.